BNC, 100% black and brown host around the clock. Finally, news that speaks to us. Genesis Robinson is the political director of Equal Ground, an organization educating communities about voting and empowerment. Genesis, welcome to Amplify. Thanks so much for being with us. Let's get into what this force will actually be able to do under Governor Ron DeSantis. Should we expect gun-toting officers at the polls? Well, Laverne, thank you so much for having me, first and foremost. Uh, this legislation uh, by the Republican leadership in our state is yet another attack on voting rights here in the state of Florida. Uh, and we know that there's a deep history of the word police uh, concern when it comes to people of color accessing the ballot box. And so we have very serious concerns that uh, the state has moved forward with the creation of this police force, uh, the first uh, of its kind in the, in, in the, uh, in the uh, nation. And uh, we, we do have concerns that there could potentially be a presence of police officers there at polling locations throughout the state of Florida. Is there any truth right now to election fraud really happening in Florida? Well, you know, uh, they continue to make the claim that election fraud exists in the state of Florida, but the truth is that it is very minimal. Uh, and yet we are taking $3.5 million of tax dollars uh, and putting it to use uh, when there is not really a need or a, a request for this uh, funding. There have been no supervisor of elections in the state who have asked the, uh, the uh, state of Florida for this. Neither have there been any state attorneys who have asked for this. So essentially, the Republican leadership in our state has uh, come out of nowhere with this urgent need to address a problem that does not exist. And you're saying Republican leadership, but I gotta be honest, you know, I've been researching this, and if you go on Twitter, especially black Twitter, they're saying this is the governor doing this, and, and the governor trying to control what happens in his state. A lot of people are concerned about that. So tell us what we could actually expect once this was signed into law. Yes, well, you know, the reason that I say Republican leadership is because although the governor uh, has requested that this office be created, the reality is that it took the legislature to get it done, right? And the governor cannot uh, pass legislation. And so the House and the Republican uh, Senate uh, was complicit, and they have worked in tandem with the governor to create this office. And so uh, in 2020, the governor declared uh, the state of Florida is one of the most secure and safest elections in the history of our state. Yet in the two elections, uh, I mean, in, in the uh, two legislative sessions right after that election, they have worked to dismantle voting rights and erode away at uh, the opportunity for people to access the ballot box. Yeah, and I think that's what a lot of people are making reference to is, is why the sudden urgency, why the sudden need, when, as you said, he had previously said that everything was fine in Florida. Uh, mm -hmm. So what would you say then is the ultimate goal here for Republicans that are backing this legislation? Yes. Yeah, so, you know, what we know is that in 2020, obviously, we had the uh, census in the state of Florida. And what the data showed us from the census is that the state of Florida is becoming more diverse. The state of Florida is moving in a direction that the Republican Party feels as if uh, we're growing in a way that they uh, don't have those voters and they don't they don't they don't have the growth in the state of Florida. And so we believe that they are very concerned that uh, they will lose political power. And so what they're doing is they're taking away voting rights of Floridians all at the expense of maintaining political power. And that's a very dangerous thing. And so we have uh, serious concerns that, you know, ultimately, uh, this will uh, lead to a diminishment in people participating in the elections process. When we talk about, you know, uh, intimidation, when we talk about the word police, when we talk about, uh, you know, uh, this potential office being weaponized, right? Uh, because one of the things that this office will be able to do, not only will they initiate uh, claims of voter fraud, but they can also accept anonymous tips. And so we have serious concerns that this office will be weaponized and used by political enemies uh, to attack each other. And then ultimately, it will divert attention and resources from making voting more accessible to Floridians. Yeah, and in Florida, back when Governor DeSantis ran, um, I'm sure you recall more than many that uh, he was up against Andrew Gillum, the Democrat at the time, that people were sure was going to win. It was a close race. That night they called it and then walked it back. Uh, 
and now here we are, fast forward, where we see uh, black and brown communities feeling the impact of this bill in upcoming collections, knowing how close they were to having a black man as governor in Florida. Absolutely, Laverne. I mean, it, it ultimately takes us back, right? And I, and I think you hit it on the head when you just said that uh, we saw how close the 2018 gubernatorial election was here in the state of Florida. Uh, obviously, Andrew Gillum came within uh, very close proximity of being the next governor of the state. And I think what the Republican leadership in the state of Florida, but really throughout the country, has, has seen is that this attack on voting rights works, right? And if they can stack the deck, if they can, uh, instead of running on issues that matter and resonate with voters, if they can just change the rules to diminish access, to take away the opportunity for people to access the ballot box, that is their pathway to victory. Not running on ideas, not running on proposals that will improve the quality of life of uh, Floridians, but to do whatever they can to take away access. And so here we are, two legislative sessions in a row, really, more than that, but under but under this governor, two legislative sessions in a row where they have attacked voting rights. Last year, it was Senate Bill 90. This year is Senate Bill 524. And so voters are left to expect, well, what's next, right? So could this be considered voter suppression? And let's also talk about the repercussions in the bill and what would happen if any of the measures are violated. Yes, yeah, so this is this is most certainly voter suppression. Any attempt to take away access to the ballot box or make it harder is voter suppression. Uh, voting is the cornerstone to our democracy, and we should be doing everything that we can to make it more accessible instead of trying to take it away from, um, from, uh, from uh, people in this state. And so uh, when, it, when, it, when it comes to potentially violating, right, one of the things that Senate Bill 524 did is it increased the penalty for uh, minor uh, infractions around the elections process. And so now, uh, if someone uh, is uh, found guilty of helping their neighbor turn in their ballot, whether it be an elderly person, whether it be someone who needs assistance uh, with, the, with the voting process, they can now be convicted of a felony in the state of Florida and go to jail. And so we know in the black community, we are very communal, uh, we work to help each other, we're very neighborly. And so the fact that they have criminalized one of the very things that we have used traditionally to help one another is a big problem. And in addition to that, last year, uh, they took away drop boxes, right? So let's just say you have someone who has a mobility issue, no longer can they drive up and you know drop it into the drop box because they have re dramatically reduced the number of drop boxes that we have access to. And so if you say, hey, I need you to go and take this and ensure that my, my vote gets counted, and you hand that to a friend, you hand that to a neighbor, that neighbor can now be uh, found uh, uh, guilty of a crime, of a felony in the state of Florida, all because they don't uh, want to have that opportunity for people to help each other in the election process. Yeah, I've actually seen that example going around on social media where people are saying, hey, if you are if you fill out your ballot and then you're going to drop it off or you're going to take it in and you stop by your parents house because they're elderly or for whatever reason, you stop by your parents to pick up their ballots and take them with you. That's a crime. I mean, I mean that, that that's that's serious stuff. Yeah. Unbelievable. So then then there's also concerns about the establishment of this force and whether or not it could target political opponents of Governor DeSantis and other Republicans. What are your thoughts on that? So I think that we should be concerned about this political, this uh, police force attacking regardless of what side of the aisle that you're on, right? I, 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 I could imagine that there will be instances of both political parties potentially uh, using this to sort of create some type of advantage. Because what we know in this country, right, just the mere a mention of an investigation could potentially torpedo a campaign, right? So even if there ultimately is nothing uh, that you have done, ultimately if you are found to be innocent, right, the, the, the headline will read, an investigation has been initiated. And so when you give folks an opportunity to file anonymous complaints, uh, to not put their name on it, and just you know make allegations against someone it can be a very dangerous thing and like i said earlier it ultimately diverts attention from making voting more accessible genesis thank you you've been so helpful before i let you go real quick is there anything voters can do about this right now or is, is this the end of the line here in florida 
So, I mean, obviously this bill uh, looks like it's on track to be signed by the governor, but, you know, we are not giving up. Equal Ground has worked uh, this entire legislative session. We've met with over 50 legislators on both sides of the aisle. We've made it clear that we reject this attempt to suppress the vote and take away voting rights. Uh, and so we're going to continue to work. Uh, we are out in the community. Uh, we're going to educate our community, let them know of these changes, both with this legislation and the legislation that passed last year, so that we can be as educated as and informed as possible, so that we will not allow this to be a roadblock to us being able to access the ballot box. And so we invite everyone to join us as we work to educate our community, but as we also work to let voters know uh, that, you know, who, 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 who the people were in the legislature that sought to take away their voting rights. All right. Genesis Robinson, political director of Equal Ground. Keep fighting the good fight. Thank you so much for being with us on Amplified.